ignore_time_segment_in_scoring Good evening to you all, distinguished ladies and gentlemen, uh, my colleagues in the media fraternity. I greet you all. My name is Sally Jo. I'm a journalist. I work for Kirfatu. Um, I would like to thank you all for, your, um, for gathering here with us today um, to the official launching of the Art of Exhibition of creativity by Lamin uh, L. Jobis Designs in collaboration with the National Center for Arts and Culture. Um, the theme for this art exhibition is centered on environmental protection and climate change. Um, but before we get into the ceremony, I would like to um, introduce the Ustas, uh, he's called Ustas Sega, to um, open prayers. Ustas Sega, if you're ready, the floor is yours. أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله الذي جعل المؤمنين الإخوة في الإيمان وودع بينكم حقوق ورسد بعدهم بعدا نعيكم بتعية الإسلام على وحي السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته بكي جناب سنتي على جلوس ينتي على محمد صلى الله عليه وسلم nous sommes venus à la maison de Sénèque à ce tour d'accès sainte. Nous sommes venus à la maison de Sénèque. Nous sommes venus à la maison de Sénèque qui nous connaissait de la maison de Sénèque. Nous sommes venus à la maison de Sénèque qui nous connaissait de la maison de Sénèque. Nous sommes venus à la maison de Sénèque qui nous connaissait de la maison de Sénèque. Lirik ladom ada memilih mui item way li mui dundam mui ini pas ini sebab apa? Lige linga kamne ni mula jering elek way lige benga kamne ya labu bi subhanahu wa taala di na konta lige nak sunwa ke lige rek jamu ya labu guna nak telipulo saya dapat fly tangan si senyak kalai joge. Kon wah bejarul budal nak te tak awal begini dengan meti tadi na yag lunya itu frek mui dal di Joshua Tala be mui Muhammad Lamin Jai mujang be Al Quran Al Karim nak am te sunyi ram Subhanahu wa Taala monyo kedigal nana ambil muna kerek sunyi kau dah nanti jital linga kam nani mui kadu mui kadu ya Allah Burbi Subhanahu wa Taala Takadu yenonsi eketuko amudara lenye nuluwara eketuko moya la burubi subhana huwa tala sui wakrek kon amutkeni kumuna wara wakati lola taka ni dhabu linga kama ni moya alquran ulkarimberek ni ibe kujeta hivi ngakamne ya la moyo si promise lurere na ne plus bunek agliki bunek sunjinda ke alquran ulkarimberek bubliki mani ya la magoi tiel sumapo. Kau nyukis ne dem jangga Al Quran bu bagi lige bini lepulo kamne boram namu na lige bifu buga mu aga ya la mu fomu na aga ya nak faya la aga sebar ke Al Quran yo kerim bar ke salatul fatiha di ne nyinga kamne ni mui nyukah fikir selain jeda ibu meni dafne tinja nak nyonen way nyujah mula minjai cinta lebih mu ibi Al Quran yo kerim ya la tiel bu bagi lige bi watu ko samu ko arko Babian ya kau ya kau bungsi dugu, fubaran buku mau agai ala agal kau ba. Wassalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Jadi gendel. Wassalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Aku bilang mina syaitan rajim. Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. الرحمن الرحيم إن الذين آمنوا وعملوا الصالحات 
كانت لهم جنات فردوس نذلا جنات فردوس نذلا خالدين في حالا يبغون عنها ولا قل لو كان البحر مدادا لكلمات ربي لنفد البحر قبل أن تنفد قلمات ربي ولو جئنا بمثله مددا قل إنما أنا بشر مثلكم يوحى إلي أنما إلهكم إله واحد فمن كان يرجو لقاء ربي فليعمل عملا صالحا ولا يسرك بعبادة ربه أهدى الله أكبر بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم إذا جاء نفر الله والفطح ورأيت الناس يدخلون في دين الله أفواجا فصب بحمد ربك بك واستغفر إنه كان توابا صدق الله العلي العظيم الفاطح صدق الله العظيم I'd like to introduce Lise Mandy to lead us in the Christian way of prayers Thank you very much Good evening to everybody I'm so honored. Before we pray, I would just want to say congrats to Lamin Job. He's a friend of mine at the university. And I want to thank each and every one of you for being here. And therefore, I will lead you in the Christian way of prayers. So you can join me in your silence way. We join together and pray for the success of this August gathering. Let us pray. Gracious Father, we thank you for this wonderful meeting. We know it is not by our doing that we are here because we are not better than those that are gone and those that have had accidents on their week going for their errands but we know god because you've guided us oh god to be here for the glory of your name and i pray oh god as we are coming to commence we pray that you will guide this program let it be done according to your will in the name of jesus and i pray god as you have started using this young man oh god in this entrepreneurial art desi design oh god i pray that you will begin doing greater things in his life in the name of Jesus. And I pray we will be all be inspired by this, by this August gathering, that we will at least do something to, to be innovative in our own ways in the name of Jesus. We thank you and we bless you. We pray that you will guide each and every one of us in the mighty name of Jesus do we pray. Amen. August Designs, in collaboration with the National Center for Arts and Culture, like I said, uh, the theme for this art exhibition is centered on environmental protection and climate change. I would like to give you a description of what climate change is. Climate change occurs when changes in Earth's climate system result in new weather patterns that remains in place for an extended period of time. This length of time can be as short as few decades or as long as millions of years. What causes climate change? Humans are increasingly influencing the climate 
and the earth temperature by burning fossil fuels, cutting down trees, and farming livestock. This adds enormous amount of greenhouse gases to those natural occurring in the atmosphere, increasing the greenhouse effect and global warming. Art is an act of shared communication, and this is what Lamin Job intends to share with us today. I'd like to quote um, a quote Francis Hollande, former president of France, once said. He said, we all have a mission, and that is to protect and hand on the planet to the next generation. I believe we all have responsibilities, and that is to protect the universe. And by doing so, we will all protect ourselves and the future generation. At this juncture, I'd like to introduce our first speaker, Ismaila Sambu. Allow me to give you a brief background of who Ismaila Sambu is. Ismaila is a Gambian social entrepreneur and leading co-founder and president of the Gambian Youth Chamber of Commerce, a national trainer on entrepreneurship, enterprise, development, livelihood, livelihood skills, and agribusiness. Can we please welcome Ismaila Sambu on stage, please? Um, first of all, I would like to say congratulations to Lamin Job. Um, he have done uh, a unique work that we came around to see and then acquaint ourselves with what he is doing as a passion. In life, what keep, keeps us going is our passion. That's the only way out. It's not our professionalism, but our passion. I would like to observe the protocols. Um, first is um, the um, head of the National Enterprise Development Initiative, which is NEDI, Mr. Abbas Bar, and uh, the program officer of the National Enterprise Development Initiative, uh, Mr. Daffe. I would also like to observe all protocols seated our aunties, mothers, sisters, younger sisters, our brothers around, students, teachers, all professions within the house. Um, first of all, I would like to um, give a brief background of who we are as individuals inside this room. Um, first of all, I would like each and every one of you to know that we live in a country where the population is 1.8 million people. Um, relating to other countries, the population might be small, but we are great in our own way. This is what we have and we, what we are with. Now, out of this 1.8 million people, 64% of this 1.8 million people are young people, that is youth. Now, out of this 64%, previously, 38% of these 64 are unemployed. But currently, 41.5% of the young people are unemployed, meaning that we are suffering a greater number of our potential sitting down, doing nothing. Now, in other countries around us, what does it generate? We have seen sectarian violences, terrorism. Lack of employment can bring about many of these things. But one thing we have to observe as young people of this country is that our youth unemployment rate is not decreasing, it's in the increase. Every year it grows. People are graduating from the university, having nothing to do at home but seated, doing nothing. Now one thing we need to understand in the country that we are living in is that government cannot provide jobs for everyone. Now even the government provides an office in every home in this country, I guess the leader of the compound, which is the father, is going to be the custodian of the office and all the other members of the family will look out for something to do. So practically, the government cannot provide jobs for everyone. But one thing we have to put in, at the back of our minds uh, is that we are all unique in our own ways. There is something that you can do. Now, what makes you an entrepreneur is that unique thing that you can do, you monetize it. What brought us here is that Lamin Job is unique in drawings. Then he monetized his skill. And this skill is going to earn Lamin money. This is what is called entrepreneurship. 
It does not need professionalism. It does not need a degree. All it needs is your talent and your passion to believe that you can make it. The problem with us young people in this country is that we don't tend to believe in God when it is hard. When times are hard, we start blaming people for our misfortunes or our failures. Oftentimes, you will hear people saying, Suma Uncle Dimbale Uma. Now, one thing I would like everyone in this house to understand as a young person, Sa Uncle, boom, don't take it. So, Rale Uta Won. That is the reason why you are nagging. But to solve the solution, Melan comes Sa Uncle. We young people have a lot to do. Many of us are growing, but we don't realize it. At a certain point, an option will choose you rather than you choosing an option. That's why we have many of our young or young people in this country doing hard labor. It was not part of your plans. But at the end of the day, you have to do it to mold blocks to earn a living. But it is not a profession. To be a laborer, most of our young people are laborers, but it was not part of the plan. But one thing about Gambians too, we underrate the little things around. So most of the time we keep on nagging, foreigners are taking over our private sector. We were seated down while they were doing their homework. When they succeeded, we started nagging. The problem with us as Gambians is not actually a problem. The problem with us is our attitude towards our problem. That's what makes our problems problems. It's attitude. Now we need to change. I as an individual, I studied construction at GDTI. Went up to the diploma level, graduated. When I went home, I started working with Indians. Saporji, Govinda, Afroko. At the end of the day, all those projects flared away then what should I do? I became a volunteer at an office, started working, building up myself, became an entrepreneur. I am a poultry farmer. I am a food processor. I am a national trainer. But it took time before I reached there. It took four years after my graduation. I was not leaning on my certificates because I knew that those certificates were not God. They were just acquainting or spicing my life towards what I believe to become. But who I am, in actual sense, relies on my belief that I can make it. The best option for our young people today is to use the irregular migration. Most of our young people didn't reach Libya. They died at the desert. How did they die? They died of taste. They didn't have water to drink for days, and they died. How do they bury them? And oftentimes, if you have a cap on your head, they will put it on your face to protect your face from the heat of the sun. Many a times, what do they do? This, the ground that they walk on is sandy. They just move the sands, push you, and then cover you with the sand, and they move on. You cannot stop, because the next person to die, we don't know. Heading to Libya, there are many things attributed to it. Most of them are captured and sold as slaves. You will walk from seven to seven without any pay. It is hard. Believe me, it is really hard. As a normal human being doing your service in your country, reaching out to another country, you are turned into a slave, being sold for farmers at Libya. Most of us don't want to be farmers here. But most of our young people captured at Libya are taking to farmlands to walk from seven to seven without any pay. So we need to believe in ourselves. Crossing the Mediterranean, how many of our young people drown? Now, how does it feel to drown? At some point, you will drop. Trying to flick your hands and your legs, there is nothing to hold on to. This is just water. You drowned in. Imagine that you want to breathe, but you cannot breathe. You suffocate to death. How do they bury you? Most of our young people who died at Libya, we don't even know how they were buried. Where are they put at mass grave? Where are they given the proper burials? We all know it's, it, will, it is never impossible for such occasions to be given proper burials. So we need to build our lives in accordance to who we want to be, not be what people want us to be.
it is very hard in this current generation of us that people count on other people to survive, not to count on themselves to survive. This is why our problems are always in the increase, not in the decrease. Now, what I want each and every one of you to start doing from now, find something to major on and another thing to minor on. Jobs do not exist. Then start creating one. What do you need to ask yourself? Is what am I good in? If you are good in talking, there are people making a living out of talking. If you are good in running, there are people making a living out of running. If you are good in football, there are people making millions out of football. So choose an option before an option chooses you. Thank you very much. I'd like to share a um, few things with you. I believe we are all gifted with one thing. We just have to find that one thing. Let me tell you a little story about myself. I'm this one person that have issues with procrastinating. Namade watch, watch, watch. Bosiyage sala maragal mansma boba maneka watch. Um, so many times I doubt myself that I cannot do what I am doing. Many times I'll feel I'll shy away from coming here. Before coming here today, I thought of it. I said to myself, can I do this, really? I mean, standing in front of a lot of people that I do not know, how am I going to manage to make them look at me or listen to me? But then I said to myself, if I don't do it and run away from it, I'll keep running away from my fears. And I'm sure we all have that fear. We just have to ask ourselves what that fear is and how or find ways to conquer that fear. Each and every one of you here today is gifted with one thing, like I said. It's either you're good in talking, or you're good in listening, or in running, or in sorting people's problems, or in what Lamin Job is doing. Lamin is a very quiet person, if you know him. But art is how he share his, is how he communicates with people. So we are the social actors of change, we the young people. So many people, especially people from other countries, would sit and say, Gambian Slim Hamrek Moy Toxi Ron Bobby Kony or Toxi Kampe Attire. It's time we prove that 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 is not true. That we are young, we are talented, and we will change the narrative. You see our political um, situation, how it's handled by so many old people. I mean I think it's high time they retire. We control the narrative. The next person I'd like to introduce is an inspiration to many. Antifatu Senge is the executive director of Gainjoro Skills Academy. She started her entrepreneurship in 2007 with Gainjoro Hair and Plus. A hairdressing salon was what she had. Two years later, she transformed the salon into a skill training center for girls and young women to learn hairdressing beauty, cosmetology, and massage therapy. It started with 14 students, all of whom are currently either employed elsewhere or have started their own business. For her social impact, Fatu was awarded the Social Entrepreneurship Prize by the United Nations Conference on Trade and Development in 2016. Fatu is an icon to the Gambia. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome Fatu Sende on the stage. Good evening, my brother, Sam Madiaro. I wouldn't see him and pass away. Um, Lamin, I salute you. Youth and women empowerment is my passion, and everybody knows me for that. I don't want to see any young person roaming in the streets doing nothing. That is why my slogan is getting youth of the streets, giving them marketable skills so that they can be self-independent and be reliant. Never think of what your country can do for you, but always think about what you can do for your country. And that is what Lyman is doing. That is why I'm so passionate about his skills. And he's talking about creativity and innovation. This rules the world. Wherever you go, if you create and innovate, you have a competitive edge. You stand above others and you win the game. Lamin, you're on track.
When I first saw Lamin, the first speaker introduced me to Lamin, um, Ismaila, because he knows that I love supporting young people. And any work that I give Lamin, Lamin will be so passionate to do it. Last week he was at my school in Farafene. He did the whole design in the school, the interior decoration and everything. If I need t-shirts, I call Lamin and he will do it within two days. Giving him a job, I told him, Lamin, we're going to Soma. He said, I'm at your door, getting ready for us to go. I wasn't planning to go, but I can go now. That's commitment. There are three things in life. I'll only talk to Lamin and the young people, right? There are three things in life. What you can control, what you can influence, and what you have to adapt to. You cannot do anything but to adapt. We can control our money and our knowledge. If Lamin had the skills and keep it to himself, nobody will be here today. But he showcased his talent for people to see and be inspired. All the young people here should be inspired by what he is doing. He's a university student. He could have stopped there and said, I'm studying political science. You must have three choices. And do a SWOT analysis of the three, as he, he knows, I've trained her on that, and choose the best one, and it leads. Entrepreneurs rule the world. We are the movers and shakers of any given economy. We add value to our national economy because we contribute and we pay tax, and that's what runs the country. The government only um, employs 15% of our population. The rest are entrepreneurs. We have 67% of entrepreneurs. The remaining ones, we must bring them on board, and that is what Lyman is showing the young people today. You must be inspired by him. He's inspiring you before he expires. And he's doing it very well. And I salute you again, Lamy. I respect you. The next thing you can do in life is to influence. And he has influence with a lot of people. When I see him taking portraits, he takes portraits to Kefatu. He took a portrait to um, Usain Udabo. He took a portrait to Taf. And last week it was my portrait that he did and come to my school. So he's influencing, influencing with people that he knows that are influential and can help him to give, to take out what he has in his head outside. The last thing is the environment that we have. We only adopt with the environment. How do we adopt with the environment? Let us pay our taxes to move our country. Let us not south as politicians, south and not do anything. They're just here for themselves. But we entrepreneurs are here to run the country, move the country to the level that we want. So we pay the taxes, we pay the staffs, we employ people, we create employment. This doesn't just stop for him. If he grows, he will grow with, along with a lot of young people. He's going to employ, create employment, inspire a lot of young people, change their mindsets. As um, Ismail just said, let us change the mindsets of the young people. He's an inspiration of the young people because he's going to change their mindsets. Right? Be committed, be persuaded with what you do, and persuade always, always network and network and network. Lam in the sky is the limit. I love you. Thank you. Abdul Ba. Mr. Ba, as known as the prophetic poet, is a HTC holder currently teaching at Charles Joe Memorial Academy. A student of the University of the Gambia, majoring English language and minoring history. He is a motivational speaker, a businessman, a leader, an actor, and a poet. Mr. Ba, the floor is yours. I think nervousness is the formula for the platform of every speaker. Whenever someone stands here, the person gets nervous. Because if you do not get nervous, know that you are not going to say anything that will interest the people. Pay la souf, mer, sol, kos, door, black, specs, asaman, texifex. So yesterday, did you watch the news? Did you see the angry, hungry wildfire swallowing the bushes? The forests, the communities, the homes of the Australians, one by one, macheting their lively trees, killing our oxygen, crossing lands, fading animals without any regrets, without any spearless, without any regrets, without any fearless, leading our stripping off our bushes, our forest trees, our fertile soil, and leaving them in bare nakedness. So my dears, did this give you a headache? 
because they are man, the art is fading. The climate is changing. Global warming is rising. People are migrating. The typhoon, the tornado, the hurricane wind is violently sinking. Cities and towns are continuously sinking. Floating streets is the order of the day. The Arctic ice cube is drastically melting, overloading. Rising sea level is fading away our seafoods, our fishes. And sooner than later, we will lose control of our aquatic farming, our fishing rivers. Our rainfall will hesitate to fall. Drought will smile on our sons, on mother earth, causing our lands to become barren. Farming will destroy our communities and climate change will change the way we germinate our seeds and harvest our foods. The rate of production will grow slow or go low. Food will become scarce. And drought will attack and crack the ribs of our women and children one by one and hunger will become the victim and climate change will become the dictator that will sentence us to life in starvation pollution our population with the infected air from our doings from our deeds the extreme use of fossil fuel in our environment around factories in industries the cars in the streets the planes in the clouds the carbon dioxide the methane the carbonoid we release in the atmosphere will give our lungs its air its there spread cancers and day by day the fate of mankind the existence of humanity, the breeding place of man will demise. And that day, no plant or animal or man will be around. Then let's come together and this truth be realized. Park away the lies and call our leaders on board. Set the meeting table and let the discussion be generalized. The solution to the impacts of climate change is simple. Let it start from each hand. Grow a seed in the sun and give the sun the source of our lives. And our sons and daughters will no more run to hide. Let the solar system be the ultimate source of our ignites. And let the artist paint us, paint and design. And let the poets write with wisdom for solution sites. Or else, the detriment of climate change will lead us to a fading art. About the fire that happened in Australia, it destroyed 2,176 homes, as well as 48 facilities and more than 2,000 outbuildings in New South Wales. And almost half a billion animals died, all because of what? Climate change. We all have to be careful on how we go about our environment. At this point, I'd like to call on Sheikh Omar Jalo, Director of Literature, Performing and Fine Arts. Mr. Jallo, please join us. Ladies and gentlemen, I would like to observe the protocols. Of course, mothers, sisters, brothers, uncles, friends, all that are found in the room, I say to all of you, Assalamu Alaikum. Of course, as she said, I am Sheikh Omar Jallo, the Director for Literature, Performing and Fine Arts. So it seems like Lamin Job's industry fall under my office. And I'm very much happy to be associated with Lamin. When Lamin first came to the office to tell us about his talent, I doubted it because I have seen quite a number of young people that will come and say, I want to do this. I asked him, where are your works? He showed me one, two work. I said, is this qualified enough for you to do an exhibition? He said, yes, I have some other works at home. I said, of course, maybe you have some works at home, but I would like to see, or even if it is going to be pictorial. He said, no, I also want to register as an artist. I said, that's wonderful. I can register you since you have proof of works that shows that you are a painter. Of course, I will register you, and I have registered him as an artist. 
and I also advise him to join the Visual Arts Association of the Gambia, where you find all the painters. And uh, that's the fraternity group that they have. The exhibition today, I think it's impressive because I like young people who take the bull by the horn. People who take it, even whereas they are not yet prepared for it, and go out there and do it. It just seems like when, um, when ST came to my office and said to me, I wanna organize a show at the stadium and I wanna feel it to the brim. I doubted him. I said, ST, if you feel that, we will also give you a diplomatic passport so that you become a brand image in the country. And uh, after one year, Jizul also came to my office and said to me, Mr. Jalo, if ST can do it at the stadium, if you support me, I want to do it because I like to break things. I said, Jizul, if you feel you can do it, go out there, do it, and I'll give you the support. We gave him the support, and I think all of them did it. And today, I have another brand new artist from nowhere. He is not even category three of my brand categories of artists who said, I want to come over here and exhibit, do an exhibition, when I have older artists with their works, but not having the passion or the courage to go out there and exhibit. Because exhibition is about showcasing your faults as well. When a good painter stands in here and looks some of the work in here, would say if this exhibition is matured or not. It means you are exposing yourself eventually. And when you have not actually laid anything on the ground, you want to expose yourself and stand in front of the, uh, the, 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 the population and exhibit your work and say, hey, criticize me. Criticize my work. If you are happy, buy it. I would encourage some of you before you leave here, please buy it. Buy some of the work here. We are going to buy. And some of the departments that are also represented in here, these are images that can find themselves in the, your offices, not only your houses, but in your offices and banks and you know restaurants and the like. These are materials that can find themselves in there. And it's a form of incentive because art sells well. And uh, that actually reminds me the fact that I have heard two points that say something very wonderful in here, but I would like to give another, not my poem, but I think the sayings of John Stein. John Stock, he's a Stoic philosopher. He said, on the way of life, without the race of kind heaven, every brave soul loses its way. The heart trembles and the step, the, the heart trembles and the step is unsteady. But to accomplish beautiful deeds, art is useful and judgment helps. But art and judgment are deceitful when heaven is not friendly. So here, Lamin Jovis have done his job. Now the appreciation is left to you. What you differ from the images that he has put in here, the messages that you take from there, and uh, the interpretation that you make out of them. The work may not be that excellent to say at a par, but you can read things out of it that can decipher to you the fact that there is a big hope in the works of this guy. So we're hoping to see another Njogu Tures or another um, uh, Ibu Tures, Ibu, Ibu Silas and the like. So this is a start for him and I would like all of you to give a big round of applause to him. And on that note, I officially open this um, exhibition and uh, please, I will appeal once more again to all of you. Before you leave, especially the corporate representatives or the departmental representatives, please choose a portrait or a work of art so that you can promote our young talents of the Gambia. Thank you very much. Uh, artistic, because Lamin Joe's brother is a musician. So our next speaker will be Mr. Ismail Asar. Mr. Ismail Asar is the chief coordinator of Circle Logistics, the Gambia formerly of UNCDF and Microsoft Ireland headquarters and filmmaker. Mr. Ismail Asad, please join us. It's difficult to speak to young people. Anyway, um, I will like to talk a little bit about Lamin. 
I met him around two years ago through his brother Alpha. We were listening to music of Alpha and then he told us about his brother Lamin and his talent. And since then we have been working with him. The last project we've been engaged with him was with KMC, with Talib Ben Souda and his team. And I, I have to um, stress something here. Lamin is one of the most dedicated person, young people I've met in the Gambia. You, uh, what do all of you used to say? Lamin Dinalalaka. Because he can keep on walking for hours without stopping. You have to tell Lamin to stop and go and do something or to eat. And he never complains about whether you give him lunch money or not. And uh, one thing I would like to also advise young people here is that talent is never used up. The more you use it, the better it is. And that is something I have learned from this boy as well. Because since we met, he never stopped working. He's always painting. Even after doing his job, he will go and paint something. You know, lately we have a project concerning the environment, recycling. And Lamin was in charge of painting all the bins that we are supposed to be distributed across KMC. And this is a lot of bins we are talking about. But he never gave up. He was working with one of his colleagues who is here, Alasana, from UTG, both of them. They will have their assignments, but just because we were working against a deadline, they never miss a day. They will always come and do their quota. And for that, I respect him a lot. Today when he asked me to come, I wasn't prepared for this, but he is a gentleman that I cannot say no to. So Lamin, more grease to your shoulders, young brother. And I wish you all the best. I hope that next time, by the time you want to do this again, you will have your own studio. And the authorities who are here, responsible in that field, will assist him to get that, because I know that is one of his dreams to have a studio whereby a lot of young people can come and do their jobs. You know, we, we need to encourage art and creativity in this country. Because you cannot develop a nation without art and culture. All great nations around the world respect their art and culture, and they promote it. But in the Gambia, from the time we were young and in school, till today, we are seeing a lot of young people are not taking, like, creative art, for example, what Lamin is doing, seriously. But I think after this exhibition today, a lot of you young people here will go out there and try to test your talent, you know, and not just shy away and procrastinate like she was saying. One other thing I would like to express before I leave is about the topic of today, climate change. Because this is a, an area where I've been working in, in the past couple of years. And Gambia is one of the most vulnerable countries in the world as far as climate change is concerned. We all know that if sea levels rise at least one meter, we will lose Banjo. And we will lose a large chunk of our mangroves and, um, how to call it, uh, swamps. And losing those areas means we will lose a lot of life, animals, you know. And I think young people should, should take this as their top priority because it is your future we are talking about. You can start inside your schools by making sure you take care of your schools, making sure your schools are clean. You don't just throw plastics everywhere and garbage because these plastics and garbage during the rainy season, they are responsible for floods. They will create blockage. They will block culverts and, road and um, gutters. They, and when we have floods, we will lose a lot of our topsoil. We will lose a lot of fencing, you know, plants, and other environmentally important resources. So I think um, if we take care of our environment, first of all, by making sure that it is clean, maybe we can give Gambia a little bit of time 
Because some people are saying that by 50-50, Gambia will lose 75% of its fresh water. That is something serious, and it will be your time. We will be old and maybe gone. So I hope that young people will learn from these paintings, because it is just not beauty. He is sending a message. He is writing the first chapter of this topic in this country. Because, I mean, there are a lot of scientists here, a lot of environmentalists. But very seldom you see somebody taking this topic wholeheartedly like this boy is doing right now. And I think we should celebrate it because this is nothing small. And Lamin, I want to receive, uh, deliver a message from the Badibunka, Sirif. He said he's waiting for a picture of Badibu India. So you make sure you do that. I thank you all. Today, we are really privileged to be here because we bear witness to Lamin's soul. What he's showing us is something that he has poured out from within him. You have no idea how hard and how much pressure and courage you need to be able to be in a room surrounded with your art and for people to look at it and criticize it and decide whether they like it or not and to question you and to think, is this the story that I see or is this the story that I don't see? So Lamin, I really commend you for your courage today. I'm very proud of you. I love everything that I'm seeing in here and I'm sure that everyone else is as impressed as I am. I want to urge the youth in Gambia to really believe in themselves in terms of fashion and art and anything that you think that you're doing that is coming from a deep source where you are not being supported. It's just as important as being a doctor. It's just as important as being a lawyer. Because what you're doing is you're being vulnerable. You're letting yourself be vulnerable in the face of people. So Lamin, thank you again for inviting me. Thank you for coming and I wish you all the best and I'll always be here to support you. Mr. Abbas Ba. Mr. Abbas Ba is the Director of National Enterprise Development Institute. Can we have Mr. Abbas Ba on stage? Thank you. Thank you very much. I want to welcome everybody and I want to recognize some of the eminent personalities around. A few of them that I can recognize is Mr. Mr. Drame, who is, the, who is a board member of NEDI. I would not want to take much of your time. I would just want to tell you that NEDI is an enterprise development agency that helps to unearth young people. And today that's what we are witnessing here today. When Lamin came to NEDI, we give him the support, we give him the advice. We took him to the Honorable Minister of Youth and Sports. Uh, we also link him to the National Arts and Culture to ensure that he's able to be enterprising because that's what we do. We look at young people who want to do business, who want to sell their ideas, we support them. But before concluding, I'll just call the program manager of the National Enterprise Development Initiative, who, will be, who is responsible for program development at the National Enterprise, to say something on this important occasion. I thank you very much, and I thank Lamin for this occasion. Thank you. Thank you very much, uh, uh, the of Jim, uh, Nedi. Like I said, we are very proud of uh, Lamin. Um, we are the National Enterprise Development Initiative of the Gambia. This is actually what we do. Our objective is to empower young people because we believe that it is only uh, through entrepreneurship that we can develop this country. And our mandate is how do we bring all entrepreneurs together irrespective of what they do, so long as what they do could empower them, can bring them uh, something fruitful and can take the country very far. This is what we do. So uh, we are empowering all young people that deals with skills, uh, entertainment, business, and all sectors that is relevant towards national development. So we want to assure Lamin that our doors are open, um, that we can work, we are going to work with him, and we are going to give him all the support that he needs to make sure that he excels and that he is able to realize his objectives and dreams. And we also open our doors to all the young people in this country. Um, once you are engaged in business, you are engaged in entertainment, you are engaged in skills acquisition, 
that is actually what NEDI is mandated by uh, the parliament to do, um, to see how best we can give uh, the opportunity to all young people to realize the objective. So without wasting more time, we want to assure you that our doors are open at the program level of NEDI, that we are going to work with you, that we are going to empower him, and we are going to give him all the support needed to ensure that he actualizes his dream. Thank you very much. Before he joins us on stage, I'll give a brief background about who Lamin Job is. Lamin Job is a 25-year-old Gambian who started sketch art three years ago, creating black and white pencil portraits of people on lamented papers. He then developed into framed picture portraits, which came in all sizes. As people got familiar with his work, he now decides to make a living out of it. He registered his business called El Jobis Designs. Lamin have a reputation of presenting portraits to really hardworking and inspirational Gambians. Presently, he did a colorful canvas paintings of all size, which he is showcasing to create demands for his work. His educational background includes a junior and high school YA certificates, which he acquired from SOS Junior School and Nusrat Senior School, um, respectively. In terms of higher education, he completed a certificate and diploma in management studies at the Management Development Institute, MDI. Lamin is in his final year. He's majoring political science at the University of the Gambia. Art is Lamin's career. Ladies and gentlemen, can we all give a huge round of applause to the talented young man, Lamin Joe, El Jobis Design. Assalamu alaikum. Uh, good evening, all of you. I'm really humbled to be the one that uh, painted all these uh, paintings, actually. <laughs> um, as she said, my name is uh, Lamin Job. I specialize in artistic imagination and creativity. Um, also, I finally a political science student. But uh, <laughs> actually, I'm really overwhelmed. So uh, the aim for organizing this exhibition is to promote and develop arts in the Gambia. Oh, okay, okay, okay. Uh, in trying to convince you about the importance of art, I want you to imagine uh, a world without art, without cinema, without poetry, without literature. That world would be a really dull place. And you know, the void of imagination is the one thing that's, that distinguishes us human beings from other species. So, uh, I want uh, to emphasize uh, the role of contemporary art in the society, the importance of art. And I'm not talking about uh, the one percent of the art world. That is the uh, sorry, sorry. <laughs> I'm really. <That's> <laughs> <laughs> okay, so uh, I'm the kind of artist that is inspired by, more by reality than by the formal components of that reality as we know them, uh, colors, shapes, and the like. So uh, I believe in today's complex world, art for art's sake is quite insufficient. Art is, as an act of shared communication performs a very influential role in society and in performing this role, art does the following. Art can change the way we think, it can crack upon cemented upon opinions and it can challenge the given. It, open, it looks at the world with a critical eye. It opens up horizons beyond those which are familiar to us. It challenges standardized and problematic views of the world. It exposes that which is often hidden under the carpet. I believe majority of my paintings will ask you what you think, prompt you to ask questions and put you into doubt. Art testifies to the power of the human imagination, the unique capacity for human to project, to dream and to reflect on things, not only as they are, but as they could or should be. Art can foster dialogue, reconciliation, engagement, solidarity, connectivity and understanding of those with opposing views. I'm convinced if more people engage with it, the world would be a better place. 
in that sense, art should also have a much more important place in school curriculums and education. Uh, artistic imagination and creativity, they are not the added bonuses in society. They are not the icing on the cake. They are integral to human uh, spirit and human aspirations. Um, in that sense, I'm urging you all to open yourself to art and surprise yourselves. Uh, to conclude, I would really, I, I would like to thank each and everyone that made this day, you know, a success. Ranging from all my moms that are present, uh, I would love to thank uh, the guys from Kilfatu for supporting me. They gave me my first exposure, actually. I would uh, love to thank Auntie Fatu for being really inspirational to me, and she has always believed in me. I also love to thank Auntie Hari, uh, my mom, Auntie Aya, Auntie Gas. I uh, thank you, Auntie Jatu, and all of you, please. I thank you so much for attending this occasion and supporting me in it. I'm not very much of a public speaker, as you can see, actually. Uh, most of what I have to say, I am the kind of person that, you know, paints them on canvases and try to communicate with the people. So, uh, this is the art exhibition of creativity. Um, I'm urging you all to appreciate it. And if you can purchase any, you feel free, yeah? So, uh, Thank you so much. Thank you so much. <laughs> wow. Can you all clap for Lamin, please? <laughs> Lamin did really well. If you really know Lamin, Lamin don't talk at all. So he uses paintings to communicate with what he wants to say to you, which is why if you take a close look at every painting, he hung here, you will find out what he's trying to communicate to you. And we have reached to the tail end of this event. I'd like to thank you all for joining us. We really appreciate your presence here. Thank you all for taking time in your busy schedules to join us uh, to the official launching of Art of Creativity by I thank you all for coming. I'm going to tell you that 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 i am 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 going to tell